Welcome back to the Whatnots Review Show, number 235, the final regular episode for 2022. My name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined by Melissa Wilkinson. Melissa, how are you? I'm doing fine. How has your weekend been, Kyle? It's been good so far. We had some donuts, which is always <sighs> a pleasure. Right. We, they, they had some cinnamon donuts. They had the like regular g -g 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 glazed versions. And then they had their like cake versions. And they were so Ooh. good. They were amazing. I liked them a lot. Mm -hmm. but, uh, we're getting in the Christmas spirit. We're starting to put up some decorations and stuff like that. So it's good. It's fun. Fun stuff. Nice fun stuff. Indeed. What about you? I've got butter on the counter right now, coming Hell to room yeah. temperature. As <laughs> soon as we leave this, it's cookie baking time. Time to get started. Yeah, that sounds awesome. What's up first? Are you? Are they all like sugar cookies, or are they like chocolate chip? Or do you, do you, do you, do you mix it up? Do all today is uh, the spritz cookies, the ones I make with that gun. Mm, where you like ka chunk the, the dough yeah. onto the sheet in like a little shape like it's play-doh i'm making those cool good stuff good stuff uh if you did not know here on the whatnots review show each and every week we have a different story to talk about could be a comic book could be a movie an anime tv show all sorts of stuff we read it we watch it we come back here and talk about it my name is Kyle Springer. I already said I'm joined by Melissa yeah. Lue Alkinson. Uh, <laughs> Hello. I, I, I think I already hit the social media button. So you just got you guys got them a second time there. I'm all over the place this morning. But today we are here to talk about snow day. Snow Melissa, day. I am so excited to be able to talk about this <laughs> movie. I so I was looking for a movie to pitch this week and i i was like i i don't necessarily want your like typical holiday rom-com mm. thing but then i like part of me was also like well i should get the new thing right like i should get that new like will smith or not will smith will ferrell uh yeah and uh, that like that may may be and so I was scrolling through a bunch of streaming apps and I went into HBO Max's like holiday um, like hub. Like, hey, here's all of our holiday yeah. stuff in here. And I was just scrolling and, sc and scrolling and I saw it. I saw Snow Day. Yeah. And I went back to the year 2000. I, I was <laughs> 10 years old. I was like, man. This movie, I remember this. I used to love this movie. Uh, and I had not thought about it like a day since. <laughs> since I was 10 years old. Um, I, I, I probably watched this movie a good handful of times. But but yeah, it was just life just kind of buried it. And I completely mm -hmm. forgot. So when I saw it, I was like, oh, my God, I need, I need to pitch this. So I'm, I'm thankful that this is the one you picked. Yeah, I think this is truly inspired. Uh, I do appreciate throwing in just a general winter movie into the pile yeah. of holiday specific movies. Uh, this one, it could be good anytime. We could have watched Snow Day all the way up through March, but this is a very fun thing to end the year on. A nice nostalgic look back. Yeah. I remember this movie fondly. I watched it like maybe when I was in college because I knew like these are the last times I will have a snow day as a college student. Sure, when I have yeah. a job, I will still have to go to my job as an adult. <laughs> also, uh, you're an only child. Then I have a mm -hmm. brother who's around my same age and we will like focus on things and quote them at each other so i wonder if just the fact that there's not another child around to remind you of the movie makes these movies sink into your memory pit where you forget about them for 20 years maybe i don't know because like it, it, th there's certain like disney channel original movies mm -hmm. that i like remember fought, fought, like johnny tsunami right i loved that one uh moto 
cross smart house like all like yeah there's a, a bunch that i remember or have like fond memories of watching them or specific scenes or like a certain line um and it, i i just like didn't necessarily have any of that in my mind for snow day except for like once i saw it just immediately transported me back i haven't thought about this in ages this is amazing <laughs> um, just like memory unlocked yeah so, there are lines that are stuck in my head from this movie like my brother and i would just go back and forth with each other to say the bird the wayne the bird <laughs> the wayne <laughs> yeah. good stuff um snow day if you guys have not seen this movie uh like i mentioned it is from the year 2000 it's a nickelodeon movie uh kind of we're kind of the ones that they put out to compete with all of those disney channel original movies well this um, was a theatrical release this was in yes. a yeah so this wasn't one of the made for tv movies this was in the theater like with good burger and, sure. and big fat liar I, I i think that's kind of the difference between the like disney channel originals like those were for the channel uh yeah and just kind of stayed on there whereas nickelodeon didn't try to compete at the same volume of stuff but they tried to have like more tentpole releases that they could release mm. th theatrically or at least that's how i remember it um because yeah good good burger is like the one that i remember um and, and then of course like the rugrats movie and oh stuff yeah like that. but uh harriet yeah, the like, spy Yes, yeah, since Snow Day just escaped and got <laughs> buried under an avalanche of snow. Um, but yeah, so this is a movie uh, about a snow day. The, the kids are hoping for a snow day because that is like the holy grail as a child, just to have a day off of school. Where you can stay home and play video games or go out and play, do all sorts of st stuff. Uh, and I, I, I remember this movie very differently from what this movie actually is. Um, so it, it does end up kind of being more of a rom-com between yeah. uh, this one guy and this girl that he has a crush on that has never really noticed him. They've never mm. like spoken in person, but he's always just like puppy dog eyes been watching f from afar. Um, and I, I remember it focusing more on the plot to stop the snowplow man, 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 man um, from plowing the, the streets so that the next day they would have to go back to school. They, they were hoping for that extra snow day, the second yeah. snow day. Um, and that's what I remember this movie as. But there is that rom-com like main plot. Uh, and then the, the B plot is uh, tr trying to, to stop the snowplow man here. So it's it's an interesting movie for sure, es especially one like as a 10 year old. I knew that this was aimed at me like, yeah, this was a movie for, uh, supposedly for me. And I can see that I just completely blocked out the whole romance <laughs> plot. It was like, I don't give a shit about that. Like, let's move on. <laughs> we. We follow this family and every member of the family's got a storyline that is appropriate to their age and their station in life. You've got the little yep. girl who's like nine or ten. She wants to stop the snowplow man from plowing all the streets clean. And then they have to go back to school the next day. You've got the older brother in high school who thinks this is like a special magical day where you can get this girl to, to like him. You have the dad who's a weatherman like trying to compete with another local weatherman who gets better ratings. And you've got the business mom who gets snowed in and has to be stuck at home trying to put together like a very important meeting while the like little five year old just like runs havoc around her. Yeah. This is a, a fairly well-rounded movie. I sure. looked at this and I imagined that like the, the parent storylines are, mature enough that I think they would play well sincerely for parents. 
Like they're not just uh, busy work to sort of fill out the 90 minutes. Like you really have something for grade school kids, high school kids and adults. Like I think this Mm -hmm. really hits a wide range of people. It can play for you at different ages, depending on what your feelings are. I'm sure a lot of people really relate to the mom's work from home struggles nowadays. That feels very prophetic. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Mm, But you still remember the magic of the snow day. So like every time you get older, you gain a greater appreciation for another storyline. But like the core storyline of the magic of the snow day never leaves you. That always works for you. Yeah, indeed. Um, I don't know if I have much else to say that's spoiler free at the moment. So I say we take a quick break for housekeeping. Uh, and then when we get back, we will dive in uh, to some spoilers and stuff like that. So we will be right back. We put a lot of hard work into the shows that we make. And yes, we make multiple different shows here at The Whatnots. And we'd love it if you check them all out. You can find out more information on our website at thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in The Whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. If you want to support what we do here at The Whatnots, patreon.com slash The Whatnots is the best place to do that. You can support us for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all kinds of exclusive content at the $3 tier. You can also get a shout out and a thank you on all of our shows at the $5 tier. You can support us on Twitch by subscribing to our channel at twitch.tv slash the whatnots. And we would love to have you all join us for our live streams and talk with us in the chat. And lastly, we have merch. If you'd like to grab yourself a shirt or a sweatshirt or a mug or something else, go to the whatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. And we are back. A big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. We appreciate Thank you. it. It means a lot. Uh, if you are a Patreon supporter at the $3 tier, you guys can get access to our Patreon exclusive podcast Pilots Club, uh, in which this month we watched the pilot for Smash, a TV show about a fictional Broadway production uh, focusing on the life of Marilyn Monroe. Uh, some interesting drama happening in that one between two uh, actors Actresses who will eventually be vying for the same role, producers and directors on the show that don't really want to work together, all the, all this stuff. It was an interesting watch uh, for sh- for sure. So go check out go check that out this month. Uh, and then uh, Melissa and I just decided uh, what uh, our our January one will be. I unfortunately did not make it in time for our December recording to announce that. So I'm officially announcing it here right now that in January, our Patreon exclusive Pilots Club will be on Bird Girl on HBO Max. This is the like continuation slash yeah. reboot of Harvey Birdman, but it's Judy, the the uh what's his name's like niece or daughter <laughs> I, I forget what 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 is exactly she takes over the company uh and it's it's a it's a brand new show from her p- perspective uh so be on the lookout for that as well cool things that we've been up to here at the whatnots uh on the review show this is the final regular <laughs> episode of the year uh, we've been doing our holiday themed pitches uh, these last couple weeks here. So if you're in the holiday spirit and just want a good winter stuff, go check out what we did last week as well. Next week, uh, we will have an episode coming out on all of our feeds, but that'll be our anniversary retrospective. I think this is our seven year anniversary yeah. retrospective. Wild, crazy stuff. There's going to be awards. We're going to be looking back on all the things we did. We're going to be hanging out and eating pizza. I'll probably be getting tipsy on that Sunday morning or something (laughs) whenever we're recording. It's going to be great. We'll have a blast. Um, So, yeah, be on the lookout for all of that stuff. On the Captain's Log, we also just did our Rotten Tomatoes movie 
predictions. Uh, and that was a blast. We, we always have fun with that one. One of my favorite times of the year is when we get mm-hmm. to do our movie predictions. Uh, so go check that one out as well. But that's about it for housekeeping right now. So let's get into spoilers. OK, spoilers. Um, yeah, I I completely blocked out that there was any kind of romantic plot <sighs> in this movie at all, at all. Like when I saw it on HBO Max and the memories flooded back, none of that was it. it was in there. <laughs> I, I, I like for some reason, I remembered this movie being more of like an operation to to stop the snowplow man this, yeah like, oceans 11 style like we need to figure <laughs> out and then team two will do, 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 do a pincer move here and we'll stop them there and that's when we'll use our snowball machine to do all mm. of that that i mean that plot is kind of in here but it's much smaller than what i remembered and that to me is fascinating that like i have just this revisionist history of of what this movie is that I just, like as a young 10 year old whoa, 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 yeah like, of course i didn't care about the like the rom-com plot of, of this yeah i was more like yeah down with the snow plow man <laughs> <laughs> yeah you remember the storyline that was appropriate for your age like it's just like a haze so cool. of yeah. child mischief yeah I remembered the teen rom-com part. I have very clear memories of him finding the little ankle bracelet with the whale on it and carving a whale, like shoveling out the outline of a whale <laughs> into this football field. And he's like, Claire, I made this for you. It's your favorite animal. And she says, but I like zebras. Like that's yeah. another line that's been locked back in my head for a long time. But I yeah. like zebras. <laughs> it's so like the 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 comedy in this movie is it, it's it's interesting because it's not so dated that it's it's just like whoa none of these jokes land mm. I think the jokes do land but you can tell that they are this like almost like dude where's my car style <laughs> humor but for kids right it's like but but I like zebras. <laughs> It's just like what is the stupidest line ever, but it's it works. It, it's it's, so it's funny. It's such a classic misunderstanding. I think it works because nothing. He hasn't put so much effort into it that you truly feel bad when his plan doesn't land. Like he still yeah. carved a really cool whale. That's awesome. I don't know yeah. how he did that. Yeah. <laughs> like even if it's the wrong animal, I I would still be impressed. Like right. it's not a zebra, but wow, what a whale! If he if if he starts like d- d- digging in the wrong line and then goes back up to look at the what he's made so far on the butt leechers and is like, ooh, uh, well that that bottom jaw is a little bit too long. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to like fill right. all that back in. <laughs> it's a perfect whale, and it's not like he spelled her name and she's like, that's not how Claire is spelled. There's not an I in it. Like it's right, just yeah. the incorrect animal, but still a very good animal. Like I yeah. think that's a very good joke for kids i think it sets up very classic setup punchline structure and the punchline doesn't hit you so hard because nothing bad has happened yeah yeah um yeah it's not it's 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 just a simple misunderstanding and not even yeah understanding based on a conversation they had like he just found this anklet and just assumed that she it's like oh her favorite animal must be a whale because there's a whale charm and you find out immediately afterwards that her current boyfriend who's just a complete douche bag bought it for her at like sea world because yeah. he thought that she liked the whale shampoo Shampoo. He's, just, he's just like no it's that's like, a good joke I it's, it's shampoo like what what like, that's like, like the, the, the comedy works because even the, the the real explanation is yes. also a misunderstanding yes <laughs> like, yes it's I, so good yeah that's such a perfect time capsule to reference shamu 
literally the biggest celebrity of the 90s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah, like I, I, I had a blast watching this too, because uh, there's a, a a much younger Chevy Chase uh, in 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 this, and I, so I was never super into Drake and J- Josh, but there's what's his name? Oh yeah, Josh Peck, show, right? Yeah, Little baby Josh Peck. Yeah, like he, man, I, I, I had no, I forgot that Chevy Chase was in this. I didn't know he was in it. Like I. I again like memories like unlocked immediately once I saw yeah. it. Did not know there was anyone in that that I now recognize to did yeah. today. Even uh, <laughs> Cl- Cl- Claire, the actress that yeah. plays her, she's in uh, Superman and L- L- Lois, the new oh. like the CW HBO Max yeah. Ver- yeah. version of that. She's fantastic in the mm-hmm. in that t- too. Um, which is kind of, yeah. I was just like, I I recognize her. Oh my god, there's there's a pretty solid cast in this. I did go through and check out like where some of these actors went. The main actor, the teenage boy Hal, he's uh Stephen Stills. He's the leader of Scott Pilgrim's band in the Scott Pilgrim yes. movie. Yeah, and okay, and one of claire's friends she's got those like three friends you see around her and they don't get like a lot of personality or names or anything one of them is Catherine isabel who's in season two of hannibal i just finished season two of hannibal finally you you remember the girl with the really creepy brother it's her she's so good in hannibal interesting you remember you remember like the 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 rich family who has like the the pig farm oh yes with the yes. creepy brother I, well, and the I sisters trying the to escape him <laughs> yeah hard there yeah right it's her and i'm like wow even in this like tiny minuscule role where she just like makes judgy eyes at people and is the judgy friend she's very that's good funny. that's funny yeah even the mom i i know i know the mom from gene smart I've seen yeah, I've 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 seen her in a bu- 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 bunch of of stuff, um, but uh, yeah, like I, man, it, but just like did not remember the cat. Like, it's so weird to me that I had all those memories just c- c- come rushing back, and then upon watching it again, being like, I actually have no idea what this movie <laughs> is. <laughs> like, it's not what I thought it was. It was just it mm-hmm. was an interesting experience for me to watch this. stuff. Yeah. Um, I do want to say, I think it's very funny that we could have watched the perennial classic National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation starring Chevy Chase. But no, we're watching yep. this very forgettable entry in Chevy Chase's career. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, Probably to like, hey, if I can get in good with the kids, maybe that will ensure my career will, you know, last another 10 years or or, or so after that. (laughs) But uh, anyways, uh, let's see. What 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 should we talk about next? I I want to talk a little bit more about that romance subplot in that. I like that Hal trying to woo Claire He is very sincere about it. He really. It's kind of a fine line between him genuinely paying attention to her and noticing things she likes and characteristics about her and admiring her and being very obsessed with her. But I think it's 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 fairly wholesome. He notices things like this is her favorite flavor of gum. You know, I saw that she has that bracelet. I can work backwards and imagine that's her, her favorite animal. Like He wants to do these very nice things for her. And it works. I like that it works on her. She does like him. She does notice him and realize, oh, he's pretty kind. He's pretty attentive. And he's way better than Chuck. Uh, yeah. But Hal's friend, his his female friend who's like following him around all day, kind of making fun of him. Like, come on, Claire's never going to notice you. But she's still... She's she's with him all the way. She's like, all right. I mean, if this is what you want to do, I'll support you. I'm here. I'm your bud. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so he sends her to like go tell Claire to meet me at the football field and I'll show her this great whale that I made. She's talking to Claire and telling the story about why she likes Hal, why she's friends with Hal. And then Claire realizes, oh, you have a crush on him. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if you know you have a crush on him. I don't know if you've ever acted on this. And 
So later when Claire tries to kiss Hal and he he doesn't react to it the way she thinks because she he had just kissed that girl like she had reached out and kiss him, kissed him. She when he tells her that Claire's so happy for him. Like, I think that's a really sweet moment that you've got these two girls who have no animosity or rivalry against each other. Like the I should have looked up the female friend's name. (laughs) Will you do that for me real quick? I don't remember up here. Uh, she likes Hal kind of wished Hal would notice that she likes him, but she has no animosity against Claire specifically. Like she never makes fun of Claire and Claire never makes fun of her. When Claire hears that, uh, her and Hal kissed, she's happy for the two of them. Cause she could very clearly see how much of a, a match they would be. I think that's very sweet that he, he doesn't get the girl. He gets the girl he needs. And the girl he wants, he has a very kind, uh, very amicable parting with. I mm-hmm. like that those two did become closer and maybe yeah. they're friends now. Like he gets his friend, becomes his girlfriend and this like distant crush just becomes a, a nice friend, a nice confidant he has in his life. Yeah. So her name in the movie is Lane Leonard. Lane. Lane. OK, thank you. Uh, and is played by uh, Schuler Fisk, I believe is how you say it. Or, or, Skyler? I, believe it, I, I would think it's Skyler, but there's a U in there. S-C-H-U-Y-L-E-R. I, I think it's Skyler, because I think that's Skyler? how the Skyler okay. sisters from uh, Hamilton, I think that's how their name is spelt. Okay. Uh, fun fact, she was also, we saw her in something else, too, uh, we we saw her in Castle Rock. Uh, when we oh, watched yes, uh, yes. that, yes, that yes, because she she's was the younger she's, version of Ruth Deaver. I don't remember exactly who that is in that show. That was but. the mom. She's Sissy SpaceX's daughter, so she played like the young version of her mom on that show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, there you go. In fact, but yeah, I I I I like her uh in this too because. <laughs> Yeah, it it, it it is that like she's not competing against yes. Claire. She is yes. very much that best f- friend, like one of the guys kind of Tom girl best yeah. f- 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 friend that's there. But even kind of before she has that meeting in the diner where she just goes off like, oh, my God, he's so incredible. Like you kind of get the mm. idea of like. She does kind of like him, doesn't yeah. she? Yeah. And I, I feel like it is the case of she she knows it. She's probably realized it, but mm. has kind of repressed it or ha- has been mm. like, mm. it's never going to ha- yeah. ha- happen. He's always looking at her, 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 her like all of that, 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 that stuff. And then I think because of what he is doing all all of this like it's a snow day anything can happen there's like some kind of magic here in a a snow day all of this stuff in the lengths like i i think she's also kind of realizing like why don't i do the same thing yes why don't i just go for it on on this day where anything can happen and so yeah she ends up kissing him and that's the thing that like snaps him back into like it's, she's been here the whole time like it's so right funny here. she like kisses him and then like kind of runs off and he just the camera pulls out and he just stands there he just stands there absolutely still stunned in the middle of the snowfield. yeah yeah it's not like he's he's sh- shocked and, and like why would you ever do that kind of way but it mm. is the, like 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 me having those memories unlocked like yes. just stood there shocked and was just like it's been here this whole time <laughs> we could have we, we could have yeah t- talked about this maybe three years ago <laughs> 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 right like like i we we i could have been with her this whole yeah. time um, he, yeah i also that, that i think is great because I, I think that's also a good shakeup for the rom-com formula yes right? yes it usually is you do get with the 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 new girl at the at the end of the day but there is still that like well maybe it won't work out 
backstage or something happened. Mm, I did ca- mm. kiss someone else or my ex ca- ca- came back in the picture. Right. But instead of like everyone working things out and moving on and then now getting with this new chick, uh, like what was that one that we watched uh, the more recent one that was the mix of the two rom com. Oh, love hard, love hard. Yes, right. We're like at the end, he still gets back with 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 uh, with her, her. But he has that moment, like right before the end, where he. Right, oh yeah, he's just like, I don't know if this is gonna work. Like yeah. everything, yeah, got found out and all that stuff. This has that that kind of moment. But at the end, he's like, actually, no, like she has been here the whole time. Like that, yeah. that's what this is about, not just going after the hot girl, but the one that I genuinely enjoy mm. spending t- mm. time with. Um, and yeah. I think nice. and I, I also really like that this isn't the storyline where you get the girl you want and you realize not just that she isn't right for you, but that maybe. She is only looks like she's very shallow. She's vapid. Like she has besides, you know, a pretty face. There's no reason you would stay with her. I like that he goes to Lane, but Claire is treated very respectably. Like Claire has a lot going on. She isn't just the hot girl. Like I like that she's super into diving. Like that's a really specific hobby and activity and sport for a a girl to be into like she's got this athletic prowess this athletic dedication to this thing she likes to do she's pretty well rounded and i i really appreciate that that like nobody in this love triangle got the short stick yeah i also love when he's like it's a snow day it's a magic day today's the day i can get claire to notice me and he like comes over the hill towards her house and every other guy has had the same idea and somebody's like yeah there's guys here from rochester and they're all waving signs around yeah it, it looks like some big protest but it's, it, it's not it, it's all to be like date me pick me it reminded me of that scene in 8-Bit Christmas where there's the one kid in town who's got the yes. Nintendo Entertainment System and all the other kids are on his front lawn trying to convince him to let them be the one to go into the house and play with him that day. Like, I'll trade you my G.I. Joes. I've got 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Um, yeah, I, I, I liked all of that because that's another like. It's not a joke you expect in a rom-com movie, right? But it makes perfect sense for a kids' movie to just yes. do some dumb thing like that. But then to mix that into the rom-com yeah. plot is like, this is actually really funny. Like, why yeah. why, why hasn't a, another rom-com done something like this where there's just a gaggle of like random guys just being like pick me date me notice me say hi right um, pick and, number and, two my lord <laughs> right exactly uh, like i that that i i think was a great um i i i like how they they mix in the plot with the other man dad 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 yes like, yeah he, like they're outside her house and to like ignore her, her her ex she turns up the volume on the tv they notice it's the news station that his dad is on so he's like i'm just gonna go visit wherever my dad is uh yeah. and and then just steal the mic and get on and mm. be like claire i love you notice me um and he does that and and it it works i i think that's an, an interesting turn of events i don't know mm. how he gets there so instantly and so quickly but hey who who, who cares right yeah <laughs> <laughs> movie magic <laughs> movie magic uh one of my favorite bits of movie magic is to talk about the dad storyline they they're in syracuse the entire movie was filmed in like Alberta, Canada, but they tell us it's Syracuse and they say it's a three network market. He's on the lowest rated network. So he has to do all these dumb stunts like surprisingly warm today. So he's wearing like a Hawaiian shirt and a big straw hat and he hates it. He finds it humiliating yeah. and he cracks the incoming storm before anybody else. But then the the big news caster in town, the big weatherman, uh, Chris Simmons, 
Simmons spelled with a Y and a Z. <laughs> like he's taking all the thunder. He's like, here, Chris Simmons. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's Nickelodeonify this name. He's like, you know, I'm I'm always on the I, I'm on the ball. It's Chris Simmons, the man you can trust. And he's going around town. He's got all these fans like kids want his autograph while he's hosting the news. While he's standing in a snowy field telling you about the snow. And like every time the, the dad goes to another winter activity, uh, Chris is there. And they go to where like these Boy Scouts are doing ice carving, which is so funny that like this storm took everybody by surprise. But already we have our winter activity set up, put the giant ice blocks out in the street. The boys are going to carve them. They're all like perfectly pristinely carved. And they're so yeah. huge. Like there's no way these like little 10 year old boy scouts could do this. It's so subtle. Like, I don't think that joke ever hit me when I was a kid, but I think it's so funny now that one of the boys made like a 12 foot tall, perfect ice sculpture of chris simmons yeah yeah and he's he's just he's so mad and that like why would you make a sculpture of him like don't do this and but then mm -hmm. when it when the sculpture gets knocked down the kid is like genuinely heart yes! broken it's so funny because it like it, it's it's like over dramatized in, mm. in, in this like, no, no, Chris, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just an ice sculpture. <laughs> this, that's the funniest part about this movie is that low key, every child in this area is a perfect craftsman. Like you yes. look at the snow cave that the little kids make. Yes. You, you look at Hal carving the whale into the football field. You look at these Boy Scouts and the ice sculptures. Everyone in Syracuse is an outstanding, prodigious artist. Yeah, absolutely. It's wild. <laughs> um, yeah, let's so let's so we 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 talk a little bit about the rom-com plot let's mm. talk about the b plot of destroying the snowplow man yeah. um because that is the thing that i remembered from this yeah movie. <laughs> i'll tell um, you what i completely forgot about i remembered this plot fairly well but i forgot that they keep putting in a fake fart noise over all these shots of josh peck chubby yeah. little josh peck God, the, the that is maybe the the one joke that is yes. is just like okay, this didn't work out so well, uh, right? Like I get maybe it. Fart noises are funny, but why yeah. always on the fat kid? Come right, on. exactly. <laughs> and it's like maybe you get one at the beginning, but as the day goes on and he keeps farting, it's like this kid has not eaten anything. He's just been he's just he's stuffing himself with snow. He's just out having maybe a snow he's adventure. Had ketchup. But that's it. Right. right. <laughs> he just had ketchup and snow. I don't know why he keeps farting. He might be <laughs> ill. I'm worried now. Um, so, yeah, of, of course, they get this huge snow day. It's a giant blizzard. There's the scene where they open the garage do -do -do door and there's just like a sliver of like you can actually yes. see it see out there. <laughs> right. Uh, so it is like feet of snow, multiple feet mm -hmm. of snow. Um which, man, I, I remember it was like 19. It must have been like 1996 because I remember we mm. got a big snowstorm then uh, that uh, we went out outside of our little townhouse to go shovel our sidewalk and stuff. And my dad put me on top of the snow in our front lawn, which lawn is overstating yeah. it. It was yeah. a patch of grass. Yes. Right. I've um, seen those. Stood me on t on top of that stuff. I I did the most like cartoon thing where I was up there for like two or three se se seconds, looked around, and then just fell in oh. completely. Oh. And it was like up to my <laughs> oh my god because I was only six years old, so it was it was like oh. two feet of snow, like three feet of snow, but oh. enough that like boom, I was like, <laughs> oh dad, <laughs> I can't so sit it. <laughs> right um and man like just like i i remember like e e even as traumatic as that was mm. man snow days were the best and yeah 
I the, I lived in a cul-de-sac that they they plowed all of the snow f- oh. around our neighborhood, like down into that cul-de-sac. And so we had the like giant snow mountain at the like bottom of our cul-de-sac. Um and it 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 was never as cool as we hoped it would be because it was always the like dirty snow so it was like brown and black and all mm, sorts of mm. stuff which is like this is not fun but uh yeah man we like that is the worst thing to like have everyone like plow all of the snow and then it's like well back to school tomorrow and it's just like no i have mm-hmm, a snow mm-hmm. fort that i wanted to build here yeah and that's exactly how these k- kids fail too they're like how do we make this last as long as we can uh and they're they're like we need to stop the snow plow man by any means possible and so yeah they they uh fake J- J- josh peck's d- d- death they like <laughs> put him out in the middle of the road with <laughs> catch up all yes. over his sh- his sh- shirt and while he's investigating this kid just lying in the middle of the street they are hoping to like break his snow plow somehow or yeah or, or steal it and go joy riding but they yeah then they, they end up stealing his pet bird who knew that uh that the snow plow may, 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 and, and whiplash in iron man right. 2 <laughs> would, <laughs> would, would, would be Best, I was I, thinking I of the same board. thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can make a really specific category on Letterboxd for <laughs> movies where the villain just wants his pet bird back. Yes. <laughs> a, p- a pitch ne- next year on the Rudy <laughs> show. Villains who want their birds back. Yeah. Um, God. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it kind of works like it puts him off of his job long enough mm-hmm. where he has to then venture out to uh, like find his bird and negotiate for his bird. But in retaliation for them stealing his bird, he mm-hmm. steals Josh Peck's character, just kidnaps him, basically. Right. Uh, <laughs> this is. His- I, I had I had fun with the storyline when I was a kid, and it is still fun, but it's harder to lose yourself in it as an adult when you're like, what is anybody going to do? <laughs> like, are these children going to kill the snowplow man? Is the snowplow man going to kill them? Is he seriously just going to kidnap Josh Peck all day and like face whatever those criminal charges are? Like, right. I couldn't. When you extrapolate it and you push it to the edges of what it could be, it becomes untenable. Yeah, yeah, it really does. Um, and but they they make that trade, and you already said the mm. line from when they're being being like, "You the, first, no, you first, the Wayne, the bird, the Wayne, the bird," <laughs> which is so funny because the bird has a name. Her name is Trudy. The, the right. kids know her name is Trudy, so they could be like, we'll give you Trudy if you give us Wayne. But instead, Trudy is reduced to the bird and Wayne is reduced to a noun. He's the Wayne. He's only collateral. He's ceased <laughs> to be a true human being. <laughs> but it's just like it's 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 a really funny moment because the snowplow man is genuinely stumped by the situation yeah. is like. Well, I said you first first. So <laughs> wouldn't that work? <laughs> like he like he's he he by all means should be smarter than these kids. Yes. And that that is kind of both the stereotype and the j- joke here in mm. this dude that he's he's just a dumb snowplow. Right. He has this this thankless job that no one likes. He's the gross looking human mm-hmm. that just has this real dirty job he's he's, he's like a garbage man right like yeah. ew, no one wants to get near him uh and and, and th- that I, I think is maybe also one of the the jokes that maybe don't land as much but also i, I i'm not f- f- familiar with the actor's name but it's oh the, chris elliott yes from schitt's K- 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 plays that to a T 
It is great. <laughs> I love him in those roles. So uh, honestly, like I, I'm kind of fine with like the yeah. character that he is. Uh, he, he seems he just, like he's like, having just, a lot of fun. This oh, really yeah. fits into the model of kids looking at an unnerving adult and like turning them into this like villain, except he yes. is. He is this preposterous larger than life character where you cannot imagine what this guy even does on days when it isn't snowing. Like what's his living the rest of the year? Does, right. What are his other pursuits? How does he make money? All we know about him is that he has gross teeth and he loves his bird and like pinned up in the truck cab behind him is photos of the bird alone in like a photo booth it's not him and the bird together <laughs> he's like got the bird on his arm and is sticking his arm through the little curtain of the booth they're photos of only the That's bird so and the bird of course doesn't pose I, so it's just like a strip that. of four photos of the bird looking exactly <laughs> the same I, I i didn't notice the like sexy girl pa pa painting on the plow like you see darling on, like, clementine the, yeah the 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 like fighter pilots or those big <laughs> bombs where they they paint the like sexy little right. lady on it like That's he's so funny like his dad was probably yeah like a world war ii fighter pilot who had like a pinup plane and this is what chris elliott is left to he's like well i will be a, a snowplow fighter pilot. This is was, the vehicle available to me. Right. Was was Clementine somehow his like long lost wife? Ugh. Did she p p pass away? Was that her? And after she p passed away, he like said, screw it and just like let himself mm -hmm. go and stopped brushing his teeth and just bought a bird and instead <laughs> to keep him company. It's the only thing that makes him happy. Now, the right. the pinup on the snowplow reminds me a lot of Petunia, the tattoo on Little Pete's arm in Pete and Pete. Sure. This whole thing had a Pete and Pete vibe, and it something about that seemed familiar to me. So I looked it up and it this was originally scripted to be a Pete and Pete movie. Oh wow. And then I think it got delayed, you know, and Pete and Pete was like off the air by then, so it became just a general all original characters movie. Yeah. But you can definitely see where this would have been uh, Big Pete in the romantic subplot with his his friend, the girl from the marching band. Little Pete's trying to stop the stop the snowplow man. I don't know. Yeah. I, I guess he, he drafts in already the strongest man in the world to help him. Definitely. <laughs> Iggy um, Pop is in it. Iggy Pop was in. I forget who he is. Maybe he plays one of the kids' dads, but he's in The Adventures of Pete and Pete. And he's got a very small role here as the DJ for the skating rink. And he keeps playing this real, like, s drowsy, like, lounge music. And the kids have to, like, <laughs> trick him to get him out of the audio booth so they can play fun songs. That's funny. Um, yeah, like, oh, another great. G -g 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 great stuff in in there that just have little, little good moments like that there's, continue though there's some joke in pete and pete where there's like a code they have in the school like the principal and the teacher need to like get a message to each other because some kids doing mischief or whatever so the one of them goes over the intercom and says don ho is in the valley of darkness i repeat don ho is in the valley of darkness <clears throat> Don Ho is a Hawaiian singer and his uh -huh. daughter Hoku did an original song for this movie. She does that song Another Dumb Blonde that plays over like the scene where all the teens are in the diner and I think it's in the yeah. end credits. Yeah. I, I so the P and P continuity is here. At, I, I was just looking at uh, the Wikipedia page and that song that Hoku did, did was one of the biggest of her career. Yeah, uh, which is in interesting there. Um, yeah, so the, the the another thing we'll we'll get to the principle in j just a sec here, but I <sighs> like how the it the the snow starts basically with the kids throwing a snowball at the principal. Yeah. And him just being like, where are you guys? Is that the best <laughs> you got? Like, it's sunny and warm out here. Like, blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah. And then it's the kids like on the roof of one of these houses with a cooler, just like a reg regular like igloo yeah. style cooler. 
uh, and they go, well, that's all from our stock from last year. Which I find ridiculous that they yes. kept a snowball in a cooler for a year and it worked. They kept several. <laughs> I And I love the one kid who's got different types of snowball. That was another scene I always remembered where he's like, I remember you've got that too, your yeah. classic slush ball. You've got the moon ball, which is like a ball with a little like a hole in it. a cut out like a donut because he's like, you throw it at him. And then and the then last thing he him. sees is through the little hole is you moon him. And then he's got like the jelly snow nut, which is like uh, it's got jelly in the middle of it. But it's this like bright blue raspberry goo that like nobody makes jam that looks like that so i don't know what it is nickelodeon but I, does <laughs> oh yeah the, the, he filled the thing with gack <laughs> he's gonna throw <laughs> yeah. a foam ball at him once they're out of snow uh but yeah, i i love the the breakdown and the strategy and the technique of different types of snowballs and how to preserve them and how to attack your principal with for them. real one 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 time uh I was with uh, my family for vacation. We all went to Montana, big sky country to go snow snowboarding and skiing and all of that stuff. And at the hotel we stayed at, they had a heated indoor and outdoor pool and was all connected. Um, mm. And in the outdoor part, you could be in the pool and it'd be like zero deg- degrees outside. And you're just like, this is amazing. This is this feels mm-hmm. great. But snow would be like right up to the edge. Like you could reach your uh, arm out and get snow. And so we decided to have a snowball fight in the pool. Yes. <laughs> and we re- realized that if we got a snowball and we packed it tight enough and we mm-hmm. dunked it in the water really fast, it yes. actually f- f- froze like it became more solid and it hurt oh. so that's what we ended up doing it's just like these ice balls of just like ha ah, take that <laughs> <laughs> it was good it was fun but uh yeah that like that is that is like what we also did as kids right is make these different mm-hmm. kinds of snowballs right I'm just like here's a big one here's a giant one here's one that is extra pat pack here's when you have to use the black snow here's one in a bag it's all yellow that one's self-explanatory yeah (laughs) man yeah that's one of the scenes that i remember but then they have this running gag throughout the film that the principal is just being bombarded by all of these snowballs wherever he goes you can't escape it. Um, and it's re- like what was really interesting to me about that whole thing is that the principal co- comes off as someone who just hates kids. Yeah. Which is like, what? Why would you be a principal of a school if yes. you hate kids? This just doesn't <laughs> make sense. Yeah, like one of those logics that happens only in the movies in the where you're like, movie, yeah. yeah, the principles aren't any any authority figure is our enemy. Exactly. Um, but yeah, like I I was kind of expecting him to be have a bigger role in the film and have mm. something to do with like, hey, did was he the one that called the snowplow man? Are they teaming mm. up somehow? Uh, not the case. But I, yeah, like I, I was just expecting this like Ocean's Eleven style, <laughs> like let's plot and plan our, let's mm. have our like white board of drawings to be like, okay, t- team one, like you're on snowball making Jody. Team two, you're the distraction, like all that 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 that, that stuff. Um, but we did not get that, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I do think that would be really fun. Though. Yeah. He's just like a running joke. It would be nice if there was like a character beat if if he intersected with anybody else. I do like that it's not except for that opening scene where like the kids are still waiting for it to snow because they're using their snowballs from last year. He doesn't intersect with any of our main characters. It's just sort of children who are throwing snowballs at him. The older kids at one point. Oh, yeah. he's, He's just like. Hi, how are you guys? And they're like, we're fine. How are you? He's like, oh, excellent. 
excellent day gets hit in the head with the snowball yeah. all right gotta go right and and, and like they, why they, like, is he chuckle out and smirk and they're just like yeah idiot right and that's it's it. like and, but, but yeah he go, could just go stay home. inside yeah but that, that You're safe? is the, the joke at the end right he yes finally yeah he gets home he turns around he's like oh i'm safe and then he just gets pelleted with more <laughs> snowballs <laughs> Uh, before, as we come to a conclusion, we need to talk a little bit about the final storyline, which is the mom stuck at home with the little boy. That, that little boy, <laughs> I remember the part where he's like, look, mom, I can put my entire fist in my mouth. I remembered that, but he's getting up to so much weird nonsense. Like it, when she realizes, oh no, I have to be stuck here with him all day. She she turns around and he's got one of his little sneakers and he's holding it up to the ice maker, just filling his filling his shoe with ice. And he's just like, ha, ha, ha. like he's just like roaring. She like to try and distract him. She's like, you can have the paint set. It got you for your birthday a whole week early. And he goes upstairs and he paints and then he comes down painted just all blue in paint. yeah. just in time for avatar the way of water and he's still just roaring at her he's he's up to the most nonsensical stuff in a way that it's so preposterous it does feel very real that there's no like clear joke structure to whatever the little kid is doing he's just doing nonsense right he's all over the place Com- com- compare him to Ralphie's younger brother yeah. in the Christmas sto- 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 story who the only and it's not even nonsensical like it it makes sense in the plot but there's that one scene where he, he eats the the food just by sticking yeah. his yeah. face in, in it it's like that scene but just constantly throughout the whole movie here uh, but he's he's all like the young kid is also a pretty good actor for yes. his age. Uh, yeah, definitely not as good as the one kid from Looper, but <laughs> the gold standard. Right. Yeah. Uh, but like th- there's the one scene where they're outside and he's starting the snowball fight with his mom and he I, he says one l- l- line and then she charges at h- 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 him and he screams but he just uh, the way he delivers that line, the way he yeah. screams, he is having a blast. He's having yes. so much fun. And it's so believable. Like, the, like, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know how they filmed that. If they just had a big snowball fight and hoped they got the mm. right s- stuff that they could stitch to gig together. Um, or or if he did have a, you know, that there was like that one line he did have to <laughs> say. But like, man. Just the the genuine joy on his yeah. face is incredible, and mm-hmm. uh, the the mom just instantly recognizing that and just being like, you know what, screw work, it's a snow day, right? Like, right. let's just have like, fun. Let's have a snowball like, fight. Yeah, like she goes out there. She's like, all right, patching the business into my phone. Like, I, I'm not at my computer anymore. I'll do it over the phone. And she's like wading through the snow outside, trying to get her little boy who snuck out, trying to get him back inside. He starts throwing snowballs at her and she like drops the phone and she like retaliates and she just sort of falls into doing it. And the, and the cell phone falls into the snow. It's a uh, And again, story. like the. Like the thing with the zebra where nothing much has really been lost in that joke. I you you can imagine that she can still get this business call to go through, especially with the way technology was in 2000. She can just be like, oh, I couldn't connect. It was a technological issue. I'm sorry. We really tried. I couldn't receive your call. I'll be back in the office on Friday and and I'll talk to you then. Like there's you you get the like if you do. Still, like you still want the mom to succeed at whatever her business thing is, because even if it's uh, she she is kind of a workaholic, you do want her to be successful at least at the job she's working at. Yeah, and she, you can imagine that deal might still do, go through later. She she was trying to do some kind of like video call. Yeah, on the in the year which is incredible. Yeah, above which is her like time on a laptop back then probably wouldn't have worked really calling like, and i think she's calling a company of, in china it, yeah like it's not unheard of back then but still mm. would have been like that's so like that's not something you do just 
at home on a snow day. Yeah. Uh, like that's that that was high tech back then. Um, which now now nowadays most of us can do that stuff but yeah uh, still yeah just just like uh, mm-hmm. she can just be like hey i'll see you in the office like uh, yeah we, we can we, like it's a snow day here like it's just not gonna work and they just kind of have to be fine with that because that's just how the world worked back then like mm-hmm. i don't know but good stuff there yeah this was a very fun rewatch i uh i think the film ages fairly well and like i said earlier i think it is well rounded i think Mm -hmm. it is a movie that does kind of grow with you because of the age range because you spend as you know a decent amount of time with the parents as you do with the teens as you do with like the little kids yeah exactly exactly um well Let's see here. I don't think I have really anything else to say for Snow Day. No. So that should wrap that up. We don't have any kind of bingo update. I just looked at it. But we're done. This is it. This is the end. So how I have two squares I was never able to cross off. And altogether, I have 13 bingos. So what's your standing? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Are we doing diagonals? Yeah. 11, 12. I think I have 12. Yes. And you had how many squares you didn't get to? Two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we're equal on squares, but I got, I have 13 bingos and you have 12. Yeah. This was a close one. Yeah. It was not this close last year. Not at all. Um, yeah, that we 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 love ch- checking in. Uh, let's see, I'll b- 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 bring up the bingo sheets here so you guys can see, see them all. Um, yeah, we we do our bingo every year. We will start it again at the start of twenty twenty three. But congratulations to Melissa for Thank being you. the bingo ch- champion of twenty twenty two. I don't remember if we decided to play for anything. I think it's just. I think fun but i don't know i think enough. last year was either way i think last year was a pizza bet but i okay. don't want to hold you to that because i okay. i also won the last game we played <laughs> last week i do owe you some pizza um so yeah uh good stuff good good fun we'll have to uh also kind of start the new year with coming up with some new potential yeah. things we could put on our bingo cards here our, our list that we can pull f- f- from but there you go that is bingo where'd my mouse go where is it minimize that there we go okay recommendations melissa for people that enjoyed this what else would you recommend there's a part in this movie that i did completely forget about where uh, the little girl is playing with her older brother's action figures, these sort of generic uh, comic book superhero type action figures. And they come alive, like in her darkest moment when she believes she has been defeated, they come alive They they like with some stop motion animation and they give her a a rousing speech that gives her the, the bravery to stand up against the snowplow man one more time. And the so if you like that part, so if you like the part where the little action figures come to life, you can watch another blast from the past of the late 90s, early 2000s, the movie Small Soldiers. Yeah, I figured it would be that one. A movie I've been wanting to get on the show. I I just haven't been able to come up with the other two movies to round out that trio of pitches. We would love to talk about Small Soldiers. It's a Joe Dante film from the maker of Gremlins and Gremlins 2, the new batch seen previously on the review show. Yeah, it's about uh, I think it's government smart tech accidentally gets inputted into action figures and they come to life and they have a war like the two groups of action figures have a war in just like a suburban home. (laughs) Wild stuff, man. Yeah, I I, I think 
I, I definitely remember that one, but I've only watched it like once. Mm. That was it. It's weird. But anyways, um, any other recommendations that you wanted to pass along? I, I really like these young adult books by a Canadian author named Gordon Corman, uh, particularly the McDonald Hall series. He wrote these books about these boys at a boarding school just getting into mischief, just trying to outsmart the headmaster, getting into schemes, trying to earn money, trying to like uh, win silly competitions. The two boys are named Bruno and Boots. Uh, nice. I have a lot of fond memories of those books. They're so chaotic. Like there's so much background nonsense happening. Every book ends with an absolute riot where everybody piles out onto the the lawn in the middle of the night and they're all screaming and it's just chaos. Yeah. <laughs> These books are the finest in young adult mischief. But if you're not really interested in reading a young adult book at this point in your life, there is a podcast called The Zucchini Warriors. That is two adult Canadian siblings who grew up reading these books, recapping all of them to you. Uh, it's so fun. It's one of my favorite Amazing. podcasts. They just put out an episode like every couple months. It's real slow, but every episode's like two hours long. They go into a lot of detail. They know this world very well. It's been such a fun way to revisit this uh, young adult literature of my past. So cool. Whether you've read them or not, check the podcast out. It's called The Zucchini Warriors. It's named after another one of the books in the series. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, let's see. I mentioned earlier Love Hard. If you want a yeah. more like cookie cutter standard f formula rom-com with a holiday spin, we covered Love Hard on episode 186. Uh, that is also on Netflix. You guys can go check that one out. Um, and uh, yeah, that one was like, it, it, I mean, it's not anything special per mm -hmm. se, but it is just like put this on in the background yeah. holiday themed. They have some fun with that stuff. Uh, but that is more adult centric. Uh, yes. If, if you want to check that out. Uh, my partner and I also just rewatched the first Santa Claus movie ah. yesterday. Uh, so I would recommend that one because that that also it like there is the the magic of the elves and all of that stuff that's happening. Yes, the elves. But then I also forgot that they have the like e, e l f s this like elite like SWAT team of yeah. elves with jet oh. <laughs> packs and stuff like that. Uh, that I completely forgot was in that movie. Uh, so there is some shenanigans and stuff that's happening in that one. And that's a good holiday film, too. Uh, so I would recommend that as well. Uh, and then, of course, you can't go wrong with Jingle All the Way. Yeah. Good, <laughs> the holiday <laughs> romp, right? Mm hmm. One of the rompiest. One of the rompiest, indeed. Um, but there you go. That would be my recommendations. Mm hmm. All right. Melissa, so next week. You, yeah, next week we are convening for our end of the year retrospective. This is the final episode of the review show as it is for the year. Uh, we're going to record again on uh, Sunday, January 8th. So we've got four weeks of winter break. And it is our tradition. Oh, <clears throat> almost every year we have spent the winter break watching an entire movie franchise, like something mm -hmm. we could not fit into a regular week of the review show. And another one of our traditions is the rotten tomatoes movie prediction game. We play on the captain's log first week of December every year. There you go. So I have for you three franchises that are having new films come out in 2023 films. We talked about films. We made predictions about, but we've never covered that franchise. So here's our opportunity. We can watch the three John Wick films, mm. the four Indiana Jones films. For the sake of completion, I insist we do all four. Yep. Or <laughs> Christmas is a time to spend with the family, but maybe this year it'll be a time to spend with the family when you watch all nine Fast and Furious movies. Oh, man. Um, I've wanted to get 
Fast and the Furious on here at this moment for a while. There's just so many of them. Is Well, the we've thing. got four weeks. This is we like, like, I think, the most me, amount of time we've ever had. Me being able to watch them is fine. I'm wondering if a single episode is the best way to do that, right? And not mm. like, what if our what if an end of the month special is the fast movies and we do like three in an episode and something like that? Um, so I might save that one. Oh, okay. Will we have time to do it this year before Fast Ten comes out? Maybe, maybe not. Do you want to say that right now? That can be our series for May, June and July after we finish The Good Place. I'm okay with that. If you don't want to pick it now, let's do it then. Let's say now we do it then. Sure. Well, well, yeah, let's let's pencil that that in. I think that's what we will end up doing. But. We still reserve the right to change plans if we need to. I googled I it to will, double check but. when it comes out. It comes out May 2023. Uh, so we wouldn't time that quite right. Also here in the cast, it says Jason Momoa is playing villain. Mm. <laughs> Doesn't have a name yet. He only has an archetype. Everyone else has their character name listed. He is listed purely as villain. Well, I if that is his n- name. It might be like that's. A wild swing. I would love to see the series take. They just start naming people after archetypes. <laughs> the villain is villain. <laughs> um, I, uh, I think I want to go with John Wick. Because I All haven't right. seen any of those. Oh, I those haven't seen only the right first two. Yeah. And I just started watching them like a couple months ago. I watch them with my dad. They're so bloody. We have to watch them when my mom is not home. So we've made our way through one and two and we have not yet hit Parabellum. So that will be new to me. Yeah. Good and stuff. it's yeah, I'm I'm excited. I've kind of been kicking myself that I missed it when it first came out. And then I just yeah. never caught up and did all that stuff. So now is the time. Yeah. And last year we opened uh, at the beginning of this year. First episode of 2022, the Matrix series yep. beginning of 2023, the John Wicks. Maybe beginning of 2024, we watch every Bill and Ted. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We watch all the speeds. (laughs) Then all of the point. (laughs) (laughs) All (laughs) one of point break. (laughs) Breaks, yeah. Well, you have to watch the remake too, even though it's not. Anyways. (laughs) Good. Okay. Keanu Reeves. That sounds fun. We will spend the holidays with Mr. Jonathan Wick and his dog. Yeah, good stuff. I'm excited about all of that. Uh, But yeah, that's what we will do in the new year. We will see you next week for our anniversary celebration uh, with a lots of like, who would we take on a date? What was our favorite review show episode? What was our biggest surprise? Who gets the best skin boy award for supporting character? I don't remember the full name. The the skin boy memorial award for supporting players. Skin Boy Memorial <laughs> for supporting players. Uh, I I completely finished that comic oh! this year. By the way, too good stuff. Uh, nice. Yeah. So we still have a few things for you all, for you all to look forward to. Uh, but yeah, if we if you don't ch- check out our anniversary retrospective, we will mm. see you in the new year. Till then, bye. Bye. <laughs>